Welcome to VMware vSAN Deploy and Manage Module 7. In this module, we're going to discuss about structured and two node clusters. The main objective of this module is to describe the architecture of structured cluster and two node cluster and a demonstration on how to create a structured cluster and a two node configuration. Then we will see how to configure VMware vSphere high availability and VMware vSphere distributed resources for the structured cluster. And we will demonstrate structured cluster failover scenarios. Let us start from structured cluster in VMware vSAN. A structured cluster allows a single cluster to operate across geographically separated data centers. This ability to operate two locations as a single cluster gives significant benefits in terms of availability both for planned and unplanned outages. So a structured cluster allows VMs spread across the data center to act like they are in a single local cluster. For this, the vSAN data store is shared across the data centers. Before this was achieved with the products like NetApps, HP or EMC storages and which give you a single view of storage even though it is located in multi-site configurations. And each LAN is replicated between the storage system and to maintain a synchronous replication. VMware vSAN is an object-based storage. Protection and availability of a virtual machine is maintained by keeping multiple copies of VMDK spreaded across multiple EXSI hosts. Look at the picture here. We have a virtual machine running in a structured cluster. A copy of virtual machine VMDK is available at a data center 1 and another copy of virtual machine VMDK is available at a data center 2 and a witness running in a third location. Between the two data center, the minimum requirement for structured cluster interconnection is 10 gigabit network connectivity. The round trip time should be less than 5 milliseconds. Layer 2 or layer 3 network is only supported. The network requirement between the witness and the data center 2 is 100 Mbps connectivity, round trip time less than 200 millisecond, and layer 2 or layer 3 network. Any write go to VMDK will go to the second copy of VMDK in data center 2. By this way, any failure in data center 1 will be managed the, with the available copy in data center 2 and the virtual machine will continue working in the second data center. A problem with this design is if any XSI host holding this VMDK goes down then the virtual machine will start working from the second data center. Sometimes this is not your requirement. You might be preferring the virtual machine to run from another EXSI host instead of moving to the data center 2. This issue can be resolved with the values primary failure to tolerate and secondary failure to tolerate. When you set up a primary failure to tolerate value 1, a copy of VMDK of virtual machine will keep in data center 1 and another copy of virtual machine VMDK will be available in data center 2. And if you put a secondary failure tolerate value is equal to 1, then another copy of VMDK is available in the same data center and a secondary copy of VMDK is available in the secondary data center also. By this way, if there is any failure in that uh, one of the EXSI hosts which hold the VMDK, then instead of switching the virtual machine into the second data center, the virtual machine will continue working from the same data center with the available copy of VMDK. Let us see how to configure a structured cluster. I'm going to edit the existing vSAN cluster to create a structured cluster. For that, go to configure. Then go to fault domains. Now from the structured cluster, click configure. You can see a preferred domain and a secondary domain. Preferred domain is data center 1 or fault domain 1. And secondary domain is our data center 2 or nested location or fault domain 2. I'm going to add two host to the secondary domain. So now we have three hosts in the preferred domain and two hosts in the secondary domain. Let us choose one EXSI host for vCenter. It should be a third location. If you select any of the host from the vSAN itself, it will show you it's, it should be external from the cluster. So host 6 is out of the cluster. So let us choose host 6 and continue. Now 
you can see we have a preferred domain with the, with the three host, secondary domain and witness. You can identify preferred domain with a star, preferred domain with three host and secondary domain with the two host and witness host, host number six. Now go to the virtual machine and see what is how is the disk placement. You can see witness is in host six. This is our third location. And in preferred site, one component is available. And in a secondary site, another component is available. So virtual machine spreaded the VMDK object across the sites and a witness at host six. By this way, it can maintain availability when there is a site failure. In the beginning of the module, we talked about uh, the theoretical part of PFTT and SFTT and its requirement. Now we're going to configure PFTT and SFTT. For that, go to VM storage policies, create a virtual machine storage policy, then enable rules for VSAN storage, then select dual site mirroring structured cluster. It means it keep a mirrored copy of virtual machine object on both sites. So by this way, if you have a virtual machine of 100 GB, two copies available at site 1 and another two copy available at site 2. By this way, if there is any failure on EXSI host at your main site or at preferred site, it can fail over to the second EXSI host in the same site instead of failing over to the second site. But the occupancy of capacity is very high in this method. You can utilize RAID 5 erasure coding also for dual site mirroring which will help you to save some space because for a 100 GB virtual machine instead of occupying 400 GB in a RAID 5 erasure coding dual site mirroring require 266.67 GB only. Look at the same procedure from flash client here you can see uh, here you can see exactly uh, PFTT and SFTT. You can add a rule primary level of failure to tolerate this is what we called as pftt and secondary level of failure to tolerate so when you give one one it means it keep a uh, for it will have four copies one copy two copy at uh, site one and two copy at site zero next i'm going to demonstrate a host failure and how to enable vmware high availability for that, we will shut down host1. Now host1 is powered off and the virtual machine is also off. It is not going to start up as we don't have a VMware high availability configured. So let us see how to configure VMware high availability. Now the host1 is powered back. Go to configure and services. From here, you can configure vSphere DRS and vSphere availability. First, enable VMware vSphere high availability and host failure response, I give restart VM. So if there is a host failure, it will restart the virtual machine at another site. Click OK. The configuration is updating to the vSAN. For the demonstration of uh, vSphere high availability in vSAN. I started up the new virtual machine. Let us go and shut down host1. Shut down. Now the virtual machine is also off. Look at the component uh, status. You can see one component is absent because of the host failure and a component is available at host 4 and witness at host 6. Now the virtual machine has started up with the available component in the second site. So this is how to configure uh, VMware vSphere high availability with a structured cluster. You can also configure VMware vSphere DRS in vSAN cluster. For that, go to configure and from the services Click VSphere DRS, then click Edit. First, enable VSphere DRS, and you have three level of automation: manual, partially, or fully automated. And based upon your requirement, you can configure VMware VSphere Distributed Resource Scheduler. Next, we're gonna talk about VMware vSAN two-node cluster. A two-node cluster consists of 
two EXSI hosts at one site or one location and a shared witness at your main site. And you can directly connect cables between these two EXSI hosts and by this way you eliminate the need of a 10 gigabit Ethernet switch and you can save some cost for the switches. This eliminates the requirement of costly shared storage, costly 10 gigabit Ethernet switch and you can just maintain the high availability features of VMware virtualization technologies to manage your workload. In a two node cluster VMware vSAN keep VMDK object in node 1 and node 2 and witness in a third location. By this way any failure to node 1 will keep the availability of virtual machine with the available objects from second node. Let us see how to configure a two node vSAN cluster. I created a two node cluster folder. I prepared two EXSI hosts for remote office or branch office. Host 7 and host 8. So let us add this host to this folder first. Now both EXSI host has added to two node cluster folder. Host 7 and host 8 is ready now. Next is to create a distributed switch for these two hosts. In a structured cluster we utilize the same distributed switch because we need interconnectivity between the sites. But in a two node cluster, we don't have interconnectivity between the sites for vSAN network. So we need a separate distributed network connection. We need a separate distributed network switch for vSAN cluster. For two node vSAN cluster. Now the distributed switch is ready. Next, add these two EXSI hosts to this new distributed switch. Add host 7 and 8. Then click next. Assign uplink. Click next. Then complete the wizard. Next step is to add VM kernel adapter for this 2 EXSI host. For that right click on the port group, add VM kernel adapter, add EXSI host, click OK. Then select vSAN then click next. Use static IP address and give IP address. You can see we are using a different IP range because this is for remote branch office. Complete the wizard now. Now we have completed the configuration network requirement. Let us create a new cluster, two node cluster then click OK. Add EXSI host to this two node cluster. Now these two node are part of the cluster. Let us configure vSAN. Select two host vSAN cluster. Click next. Claim hard disk for cache and capacity tier. Click next. Select a EXSI host at main data center for witness. Then click next. Review the settings and complete the wizard. Now a two node uh, vSAN cluster is getting ready. 
look at the capacity of data store we have at the vSAN data store with uh, nearly 40 GB that is all about module 7 we covered all the topics that mentioned in the objective thanks for watching this video